Alternative Radio. Missy and I are talking about flexibility. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The show is about to begin. Finding Peace, and this is the podcast where Missy and I talk about practical daily tips that we can do to help find our inner peace and happiness on a daily basis. And today's topic is on flexibility. So very interesting topic, I guess. But how are you doing? It looks awfully uh, sunny over uh, down south. Uh, sunny and hot. And, and a little humid, and I'm wearing a sweater inside the house. <laughs> so, um, yeah. I won't judge. Yeah, don't judge me. I'm cold. It's like uh, 74 in here, actually. It's actually 70, 70 in my house. So it's a little chilly for me. But when you walk outside and you're in the moisture and, you know, whatever, letting the dogs out, watering plants and whatnot, and then you come back in, it's like you're wet and you're cold. <laughs> so, yeah. so there's the sweater reason. But um, yeah, so you got to be flexible again. You know, here we are exactly. talking about the, the topic already. Um, exactly. See, the, the, you're already uh, already working it. Yeah. And uh, I, I, according to the weather, was was supposed to be rain later on today. And I was going to sit outside and no, I was no. woken up to a <laughs> thunderstorm and rain and it's wet and cloudy. And so, you know. Again, flexible because yeah. all my weather apps were obviously wrong. Well, you know, and and I think that we've had we've had similar discussions to this before, but you know, like when we attach ourselves to a certain way or outcome is when we suffer. And so I thought flexibility was a great conversation for us to have mm-hmm. today because you know sometimes we have our heart set on things and um, they don't come through, or they don't come through when we expect. So then we're impatient, we're inflexible, you know, we're limiting ourselves to what we think is the right thing. And um, rather than just letting it flow and and letting it play out. Um, and I think that's really important when it comes to being able to have peace. Yeah. It, it's just kind of going with the natural course of things. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, I think the obvious example is, you know, do you just let yourself float down the stream or do you struggle? you know, going in the opposite direction. And there are times when you need to, uh, you know, and, you know, I mean, look at the salmon, you know, that that's something that's important for them to, to struggle uh, up there for their survival. And, you know, I, I guess if we were flowing toward a waterfall, you'd want to struggle. Uh, <laughs> but in, in, in the normal course of life, if we just go with the flow of life we're, we're going to have more inner peace because we're not fighting uh life and th- that struggle is usually our expectations which we mentioned before uh on the show but yeah it's either well that was my schedule for the day or, or that was my expectation what would happen or or any of those and then that brings on the stress which takes away the inner peace and yeah instead of just saying all right we we can't do whatever at this time. Let's see when we can. So I have a really funny story. It's it's a little taboo, but I'm going to try to be very. Um, uh, <laughs> Are you going to get straight, us canceled? Straight. I hope I don't get us canceled. <laughs> so it's like um, overwhelm, right? When you get to the point where you think that this is the way that it should be, and why is it not? You're you're doing too much. You're trying to make it work, and you're 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 doing it in your humanness. Like we have to, you know, we have to get it all done all by ourselves rather than we've asked for these things to happen. Right. And, and instead of, um, you know, shutting it off, we're, we're not opening up to the flow. Right. And so mm-hmm. I kind of, I referenced this as like a, a deep throating of the universe, if you will, it's like, relax, let it happen. And then everything will just fall into place. 
And um, so, so that was my gentle way <laughs> of putting it. But, but you know, that's really what it is. If you just re- recognize in that moment that that you're so stressed and that you're so overwhelmed mm-hmm. and that you're making up all these illusions about what your position is in your circumstance, then when you relax and you go like, okay, wait, I know everything's working out perfectly. I know that if I just go with the flow and see where it leads and I don't make up all these thoughts about it, then it always turns out right. You know, it's like 90% of worrying never, whatever you're worried about never comes to fruition anyway, you know? Um, so it's, it's just one of those letting go of things just to see what happens. Let's see what happens. Oh, this is exciting. What's, what's new about this. Right. And I am, I can admit there are some moments that I just cannot get excited about, (laughs) but at the same time, it's that even the awareness of you're noticing, you're not excited about it helps you recognize that inflexibility and, and then just kind of gently can move you into um, being a little bit more open. Yeah. And, and flexibility is, is something that I've had to work with because uh, I, I tend to like to be in control and in, in that sense of really desiring that sense of control, I'm not going to be flexible because it's like, well, this is just how it's supposed to be. And, you know, uh, that's it. So it's really as I've gotten older that I, I've come to better understand the flexibility and to really see that going with the flow and, and just letting yourself relax. Um, you know, one of the things for me that that's, um, I can't do, I, I've never been able to do um, is roller skate or ice skate. Really? Could never do it. Um, tried, I mean, as, as a, a teen, we still had roller rinks and, you know, I'd go with the friends and never happened. And I grew up up North where there was ice and we did, you know, go ice skating and never happened because what I realized is I tense up. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm not flexible. I, I lock my knees. I, I, I just lock my entire body, um, because I'm so afraid of falling. And I've got to be in this control that I'm not going to fall. Yeah. But I lock myself up, which makes me fall. So, <laughs> but I, I, I've I'm never, not bad enough of that. <laughs> yeah. You know, but I, I, I've never been able to just totally relax, yeah. you know, so j- just to let the body be and kind of let the body do what it does. You know, I mean, the, the, the muscles and, and the joints and all are, they're going to do what they do. To, to keep me stable and I don't have to force it, Yeah. but I do. And in forcing it, I've never been able to do that. Wow. Well, that's amazing. You know, uh, here's something really cool. And I'm just going to mention this briefly because I do have some more comments on that, but <laughs> they have these little things. They're like little PVC things, like almost like walkers, but they have wheels on them yep. for the little kids now to help them figure it out. And I just like, they didn't have that when I was young. We, that, we fell no. a lot. <laughs> so Yeah. yeah I, I've seen those and, and I think they're cool. Not that I want to use one now, just because, no, no, no. <laughs> you know, like they're not cool for my age, but um yeah, I mean, you know, and actually had we had those and uh, I, I might have learned yeah. how to do that. Yeah. But no, we, we didn't. You know, you tried to hold on to each other. Or I, you know, I would hold on to the glass, yeah. uh, you know, and then kind of work my way around the rink, you know, but. Um, That's yeah. <laughs> well, so so one of the things that came up when um, uh, you were speaking in my mind was uh uh, one of the teachers that I listen to and, and mentor with, I mean, is uh, Aaron Abke, and he's got, you know, he does a Course in Miracles, The Law of One. He, he's uh, he has a lot of knowledge, and um, I was listening to one of his uh, videos the other day, and he says that the three conversations that the ego has are incompleteness, attachment, and control. And so I thought that that was all interesting how when we're attached to something, we're being inflexible. When we're feeling incomplete about something, we're not being flexible about what's being shown to us. And when we're in control, we think that we're in control. We're never really in control, right? We're not being flexible. We're not being lived. 
we're thinking that we have to live. And instead of allowing uh, the life force to come through us, to have us live. And um, so, I mean, you know, it's like, it's like, um, you know, us with, with making this appointment, you know, we have a schedule every two weeks to have this appointment, but mm-hmm. oh, if something comes up, then we are both very flexible to, oh yeah, sure. I can do it earlier. I can do a different day, you know, uh, whatnot. And if not, then this wouldn't be produced, you know, if we were right. inflexible about that. And so there's things that, you know, I'm sure that most people can recognize as being a parent, you know, like you think that you're going to go to work today, but your kid is now sick with a fever and you can't leave the house or, Mm -hmm. um, you know, somebody falls and skins their knees and then you end up in the hospital, you know, whatever, like you have to go with the flow to make life a little bit more easy. And it's, it's when we get all sprung up about what it was supposed to look like, you know, it could have ruined our trip to Disneyland for the day or, or whatnot. But, you know, if you get into a car accident, well, God, thank, thank God that everybody's alive and well and, and safe, mm-hmm. you know, and, okay, well, we have some damage that we have to work through with this car, but otherwise, you know, it's just thinking things like that and just trying to find the good in the situation of whatever, instead of focusing on what's wrong. Yeah. And, and it, it goes back to what I preach all the time is about shifting our perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I've been in a couple car accidents, uh, nothing huge, um, but huge enough to have my car towed. Uh, but it, it is that same way, you know, that, you know, it, it was um, going in the morning on the way to work, you know, so that just messed up the whole work day because, you know, well, that wasn't going to happen because now we're waiting for the tow truck, getting the tow, we call it the insurance, all of those hassles. But you're right, in shifting that perspective, I was able to see, well, yeah, I mean, I'm okay physically. The the other people were okay. Um, you know, the tow truck will get here, and I'll get a ride in a tow truck. So, you know, for me, I like trucks. That's kind of cool. Um, <laughs> but, you know, not being able to go into work, I, I, I was kind of like, well, yeah, it's, it's a day off. You know, and I know some people say, yeah, but, you know, I don't get paid for that and all. Well, you know, that that's still true. But look at those still that bonus that maybe you have more time with your kids or, you know, with a partner or just for you. You know, is this a bonus time that had it not happened, you wouldn't be able to, to sit at home and maybe try to relax. Right. Exactly. You know, and, and you got that bonus to, to do that. You know, and I'm a firm believer that, you know, you're getting messages all day. If you're being told mm-hmm. to relax and you're not relaxing, something will happen to make you relax. And uh, again, it's like, you know, there's that resistance when we're being told we're giving these messages of where you should go, what you should do, who you should speak to, you know, things like that. And we go like, mm, I'm not doing that. Mm, no, I'm not telling that lady if she looks nice today. Or no, I'm not going to go see if that homeless person needs a pair of shoes because then I lose, right? You know, I have to give up something of mine. And like, you have a different perspective when you just realize that like you're, you're the messenger through life, right? And if you're delivering the messages, then things are gonna go wonderfully, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And if you decide that you're not, it's like Jonah and the whale, and I, I hate to bring Christianity into it, but that's what it reminds me of. It's like, you know, like mm-hmm. you will be found and you, you know, it's gonna be, it's gonna be, happening one way or another um I, there's a story something to the effect of like uh, between prince and michael jackson like you know the message was delivered to michael jackson about a song writing a song and he was like mm, yeah no i'm not gonna do it no i'm not gonna do it right and so the message didn't come through him and then that message came through prince and so months <laughs> later when prince produced this song uh, michael jackson was like oh my gosh that's I like, I know the words to the song before I've even heard it on the radio. And uh, so it's just like one of those, hey, God will move on, <laughs> you know? And uh, mm-hmm. if you're not being flexible with what you're being asked, then, you know, you're not going to have that peace. You're not going to, you're not going to have that experience and, you know, it'll happen, but not for you. And, and that's that whole notion of getting out of our own way. Yeah. You know, that we're, we're trying to control so much that, that yeah. in reality, we're getting in our own way. Yeah. And the more that we can kind of allow our days to flow mm. and do what we need to do and do it to the best of our abilities at all times, yeah. 
we're going to find that, that inner peace, but it, it's when we put up our own barriers, such as the, well, you know, it, it's scheduled, it's supposed to be, it's, you know, I expected this, I planned this. Yeah. Okay, all of those things are true, but also what's true is maybe all that just blew up in your face. You know, and in, in, so here's a quick little story. I went for a, a line of credit so that I can put a roof on my house. And um, and it took three months. Like everybody's like, what? How? Why did it take? I don't know. For whatever reason, it did. Maybe it's teaching me patience. Maybe it's, you know, wasn't the time for me. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But if I was inflexible and all sprung up, I could have ruined a lot of people's days just by calling every day. And why is this taking so long? And you know, and I, I was pleasant and calm through the whole situation because I knew what was going to happen. Like I knew it was going to come to fruition. I wasn't worried about it. It was like, I placed my, my order with the Applebee's waitress and I was just waiting for the food to come, you know? And, um, you know, it's, it's that they have the saying, uh, ready, aim, fire, but we've talked about before it should be ready, fire, aim. You get yourself ready. You know what you want. You aim mm -hmm. after it, and and no matter what happens, you you know once you fire, once you set yourself up, and you're like, okay, I'm going for it. That's firing, and then you continuously aim towards the end result that you're looking for. And however it happens, however long it takes to happen, just keep knowing that it's it's coming your way, and you're gonna get it. Mm -hmm. and you can just be flexible with whatever you know, boulders you're flowing over on the river or, you know, creeks that you have to squeeze in between. It, it becomes uncomfortable, but that uncomfortability also helps us grow. Yeah. And, and when I, I've gotten pushback from people, you know, who say, yeah, but, you know, we do have to make plans in life and, you know, we do have to like set up, you know, our financial futures or, you know, where our kids are going to go or, you know, things like that. I'm not saying that we don't set up your basic plans for, you know, taking care of self, mm -hmm. but it's the flexibility in how those plans yeah. end up. So, you know, like, like maybe you're planning because you want your kid to go, you know, to college and you're saving up all of this money and, and then your kid eventually doesn't want to go. You know, so the plan wasn't a bad plan. It was good that you made the plan, but now the flexibility comes in, you know, when, when your kid says, I, I, I really, you know, I, I want to do this trade school or I want to do, you know, whatever. So the planning was still good. The planning was appropriate, but we're flexible at the end. Yeah. You know, so planning isn't bad in and of itself in, in my mind. It's are you flexible with the process as it proceeds? And can you make changes as the flow changes? Well, so still, still plan for life is, is, you know. I have a great example of that is my son is 16 years old. And a lot of people think I'm absolutely insane because this child loves to ride motorcycles. He loves to do tricks. He loves, you know. And I can't be in fear-based living watching him do what he does. I mm -hmm. ride motorcycles, so why wouldn't I allow him to, right? right. And um, so I get a phone call yesterday that he has a Grom. It's a 125. It's a Honda, right? It's a little okay. bike that he does tricks on so he can learn and he can get mm -hmm. comfortable and whatnot. Well, so right. he had his helmet on. He had his gloves on. He had shorts on and uh -oh. he had on a T-shirt. Um, uh -oh. Anyway, long story short... He uh, was doing a wheelie and it was on, a, it was on a road all by himself, did a real, did a wheelie, hit a pothole, pothole wins, right? So I get a call. I'm scratched up here, mom here. I got my elbow, my shoulder, my hip, my ankle, mm -hmm. not I'm, I need to go to the hospital, but like, what should I do? Okay. Well, if you're yeah. not feeling like you need to go to the hospital and I'm telling you the, it was pretty gruesome. Um, I said, wrap it up, put pressure on it. If it doesn't stop bleeding, you know, we might need to go get you some stitches. Okay, mm -hmm. fine. So he does. Dad comes home. Dad looks at it and he's like, ah, I'm not so sure about this. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, well, I'm on my way to the bank to sign these paper, this paperwork for the loan. Right. I can't be there right away. Well, I don't feel comfortable making the decision. Like, right, you know, I, I, I don't know what's, and besides he's not, he's very squeamish. Like he can't look at the- uh. 
And me, gotcha. I'm like, I don't care what. <laughs> let me dig yeah, in uh, yeah, yeah. Well, let me dig uh, into this a little bit. Yeah. 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 So I, <laughs> I stopped before I went to the bank. I went to Walgreens, bought all the things, you know, anyway, long story short, that wasn't in my plan. Right. I go to the bank, mm-hmm. I sign the paperwork, I get there, you know, we look at it. And, you know, I, I feel I clean it out. I antiseptic it. I wrap it up. I feel like, you know, okay, he's, I think he's safe not to go to the hospital, but it wasn't in my plans to go to my ex-husband's house Mm -hmm. and, and hang out and help my kid, you know, but it's change, you know, and it wasn't in my plans to, you know, stop at the grocery stores late at night. I wanted to have everything ready so I could just come home and eat, you know, so I ended up not eating all day because I had X, Y, Z to do and. Anyway, Mm -hmm. it's just, but I didn't lose my peace at all yesterday. Mm -mm. You know, I was in a, I was in a good neutral position. You know, I wouldn't say I was wildly excited about things that were going on, (laughs) but I wasn't upset and I wasn't in a low vibrational state. And, you know, I'm glad that I have people that think highly enough that they rely on me to make decisions like that. And, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it wasn't me making the decision. You know, my yep. son, his intuition's like, mom, I'm fine. My elbow's not broken. <clears throat> you know, like I just, I feel, but I had to reassure everyone mm-hmm. that that was okay. That w- that was going to work out. And, uh, and it did. And today's a new day. So who knows what it holds. <laughs> and hopefully shorts and t-shirts are no longer I in his wardrobe when he rides. But again, you know, you never know what happens when. But he's sixteen, so it may happen again today. You know, I, you just yeah. don't know. Yeah. Um, thankfully, the helmet—that—that's yeah. that, that was probably the more important piece. Yeah. But yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, but that—that that yeah. is that flexibility. He wasn't planning for that. No. Yeah. But part of that is also that flexibility that if you're going to enjoy activities such as that and you have gifts and talents for Mm -hmm. you know activities such as that you have to have that flexibility that sure something is bound to go wrong at some point Mm -hmm. you know and it it doesn't matter how skilled you are it it doesn't matter your age it's just things can malfunction or like you say potholes or uh, uh, wrongly placed rock in the trail yeah (laughs) that just you know, kicks your wheel out, you, you don't know. And, that, and that's just part of that flexibility to be prepared in life that things could go awry. We'll have to deal with that in the moment. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing out. That, that's the best thing about staying present is you're not worried about the past because it's in the past. You're not worried about the future. You're just focused on where you're at right now. And, and when you can do that, that's how you live flexibility. When you stay present, yeah. you're like, oh, okay, well, this is what's happening right now. Well, let's deal with this right now. And then, you know, you move on to the next moment because something different might happen. Exactly. Well, one of the things that, that I was taught and uh, I, I um, fly, well, at least can fly a single uh, engine prop uh, planes and so during my my lessons, which was twenty some years ago now, surprisingly, um, you know, one of the things that they always teach you is the first thing you do and the only thing you do is fly the plane. Yeah. So it's like no matter what happens, it's what is the a number one thing you do is to keep yeah. flying the plane. Right. You know, so even if you lose your engine, what do you do? Fly the plane. Yeah. You know, so that that's living in that moment of I'm not worried about necessarily the next step right now. What do I need to focus on? Fine. Fly that plane. Yeah. No, I like that. You know, that's and true. and then you start dealing with you know as things, you know, you need to start doing things like you know, we yeah, where am I going to land? What am I going to do? What? But but it's always at the moment. What are you doing? I'm flying that plane. Yeah. That's awesome. That's a great, uh, yeah. great, great wrap up, I think. Cool. So coming in for a landing, is that what you're saying? Coming in for a landing. <laughs> <laughs> that was bad, I know. <laughs> no, it was perfect. Dad joke time. <laughs> <laughs> Dad joke time. <laughs> well, thank you guys for listening and thank you for giving us your feedback on, on our podcast. Thanks for um, uh, being listeners. We really appreciate you and, and uh, 
you know, we hope we can, can continue to uh, give you information that brings you peace. Exactly. And, you know, if, if this is information that you like, please uh, hit like, comment, let us know what you'd like to hear about. You know, what, what would you uh, want us to uh, discuss and share with your friends? That That's the most important piece. Absolutely. So, exactly. So stay flexible. That's right. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye. See you.